Today, boys and girls, we're going to talk about how normal people think about money and why you should move from normal to a typical to exceptional in regards to your thoughts about these crispy ducats, that dollars, those credit deductions, all that stuff. Because if you're thinking about money like normal people, let me explain to you why you're doing it wrong. First of all, it started with middle class America. What you do is you go out and get a job, right? Then you go into debt to go to school, right? Then you go into debt to get a house, right? Then you go in debt to get a car, right? So let's just dissect all that. So you're in debt to get your education. You're in debt to get your car to drive to the job that you were in debt to get your education and you're in the house that you're in debt that is coming from the money that you have on your job that you got through debt. Now, saying it out loud, it sounds kind of crazy. It wasn't always this way. Long, long time ago, people used to have 10 year mortgages, 15 year mortgages, and people were required to save up a lot of money to be able to afford a house. The foreclosure rate was like non-statistical, but today everything is built upon leverage. So if you're a normal person, you think that having a high credit score and being in debt up to your wazoo is normal. That's why you're in trouble. What's going to happen in the new coming economy, the new tech world, the new economy, everything is that's going to get turned on its head. So how does one get out of that? Also, wait a minute before I forget, normal people think that they can invest their way to wealth. Let me say this again, and I'm going to extrapolate and I'm going to go over here into some corners because it's what I call the duplicity of the economic markets. You'll have a group of people over here who are balling out of control with stocks, bonds and investments. And over here you have a group of people who have their 401ks. They're putting a little bit of money into their 401ks. But after 10 and 15 and 20 years, the average person has $24,000 in their 401k. That is half of the people who actually have money in the stock market. And 42% of the country has money in the stock market in some shape, fashion or form. So what that means is out of that 42%, 21% don't even have a grip. Don't even have any real statistical net worth. And this is the financial trickery that's played on you to keep you playing the normal people money game. You got to get out of that. So what's your first step? First of all, for some of you, this is going to be too late. You need to think long and hard before you go to college. And I suggest that unless you are a sterling academic student that's going to be in the top 10 percent of an Ivy League school that you hold up and you wait a minute, maybe even go to trade school, maybe even go into the military while you figure some stuff out, because chances are if you're not in that top 10 percent, you don't pick the right career. Going to school can economically hold you back for decades. The second thing you need to do, you need to start thinking of money as economic bullets in your gun in this economic war fight. Each dollar, each nickel is a bullet. Like a dollar is a big bullet, a quarter is a smaller bullet, you know, go on down the chain. But if you want to win this game, you've got to start early. And this is one of the things, because typically in Western civilization, kids go to school, they hang out, they do drugs, they get in trouble. This is kind of normal. Once again, normal monetary behavior. Now, if you're a kid that comes from a rich family, this doesn't really matter. I mean, you could be stupid. You could be a C student and become president of the United States. If you come from a rich family, you could be a drug addicted addict. And if you had a family member who had some wherewithal and some resources, Grant Cardone, you could go on to become a multimillionaire. See, this is the thing. Uh, I listen to Grant. I love Grant. Love him to death. But he didn't start off from scratch. For those of us who really started off the bricks, we're talking about waking up, freezing, not having food to eat and going to school with busted out shoes and clothing with holes in it. That's starting from nothing. If you had a father and a mother that left you a life insurance policy that enabled you to go to school and go to college and come out with no debt, you did not start off from nothing. This is just stupid human tricks. But 
you got to start figuring out a way to make money. Uh, before I sat down to do this video, I saw someone that left a comment about a certain person who used to talk about stocks and investments, right? And now they're talking about side hustles. Once again, in about 30 years, most of the people in America will be self-employed or some type of contract worker. It is coming. It makes sense for corporations. And if you are a smart person, it makes sense for you because you will get some deductions that you are just not going to get with a job. So it's a little scary, but for those of you who want some additional help, go below and check out some of the offerings at moneyincomeandprofit.com because this wave is irrevocable. It, you can't stop it. It's just out of the box. It's kind of like when you let, um, what is that? Not a genie out of a box, but when you let foam out of a can, when you let your shaving cream out, once it come out, there ain't no putting it back in. That's where we are with this thing. So the third thing you need to do is to become an adroit manager of your money. Now this is not to be confused with saving for just saving sakes. Manage your money is different than savings because you have future purposes and that money earmarked or ear tagged for certain things. This is why you need the five checking accounts. This is why you need to also have a job while they exist while they're still there, get them, get, get the job, get it while the getting is good. Then you have a side hustle. One of the things we're going to do on this channel is teach you how to create side hustles that can be long term business models. There's a ton of information out here. There's Amazon Merge, there's eBay, there's Amazon, there's Craigslist, there's Uber. There's all of these things that could be a side hustle, but very few of them can become the main enchilada, the main entree, that, that big dish that you can eat off and feed you, your family, the dog, everybody's eating off the same plate. Most of these side hustles cannot do that because even if you get to the point where you make livable income, the platform that has set this side hustle up is going to change the game. And when they change the game, that means less money for you. Are we talking about this? Because here's the sad news, and it really is, I'm gonna tell you the truth. This is not gonna be an overnight process. This is gonna be a two to five year process for m many of you. Some people gonna be able to pull it off in three, but look the two to five years are preferably five to seven. And this is going to be something you need to do on the side while you still have that job and then you bank all of that money. And this is why the five checking account blueprint is so important because it teaches you how to manage money. You can get it free at moneyincomeprofit.com and start aligning up your finances because here's what's going to happen. We're currently in pre-recession stage, which means that there are certain sectors that are in a recession. It is clear in certain sectors such as retail are in a depression. Auto loans, someone sent me this, auto loans are at like a nine year Auto loan defaults are like a nine year high for subprime borrowers. And I think it's even higher. This is just the tipping point. Housing is starting to slow down. Car loans are going to default. Now, here's the thing with the car loan. Most people need their car. Once again, remember, you know, you went to school to get into debt to get your job and you went into debt to get your car to get to the job that you went to school to get in debt to get the skills to get the job. You know what I mean? That's usually a priority payment. So if people are paying their car notes late, you can best be assured that other things are going late, such as credit cards and possibly even the mortgage. So what does all this mean? If you're a person with a lot of debt, you're in trouble. I don't care if you're paying your bills. I don't care if you have a little money set aside because you are leveraged. And this is what the average person thinks is normal financial wisdom. You're so leveraged that if one little stick moves off of your economic tree, like not even lose your job, just say they cut back your hours. You got some problems. During this recent uh, government shutdown, many federal employees who had savings exhausted them and they missed two paychecks. And these were people with savings. These were people who had saved some money away for a rainy day. Now, what about the people and the contract workers who had no money saved? It was not looking good for them. And this is what's going to happen systematically throughout the fabric of America over the next decade. 
you're going to see reduction in job force. You're going to see certain uh, sectors eradicated. Can you say horse and buggy? Can you say blacksmith and anvil? There was used to be one of those on every corner, like service stations. Now, that's a specialty job. And if you in the right place, you can make some money because there's just not that many of them. You have two choices. You can prepare now or you can be forced under the duress of financial extinction to adjust your ways and to change up how you're doing things. That's where you are. That's the options you have. That's what's going to go down. So I implore you to start changing your financial ways and to move as fast as possible away from normal people financing financing or let's call it middle class finances. Middle class finances are predicated on debt. Now, if you have a house note, and you'll have a car note and you'll have any credit card note. That's really not that bad. But typically, most people have this. They have taxation. They have student loans. They have a mortgage and they have a car payment. That's a lot of weight. And uh, we know what happens when things get heavy. Things tend to get crushed. So that's all I got for you. If you need any help, I've got a few courses. I got a few things to accelerate the process. Uh, we're in the the we're currently building out moneyincomeprofit.com. You can get in for the low low. And for those of you who have asked for it, we're going to put some credit management systems to the basic financial education section. That is the first course. There's a second one. There's only three. So that would be the first course. That would be the thumbnail with the wallet. So we'll get into that because I have some concepts. I've been living my life very differently. I've been using my credit cards as a debit card, meaning that I'll pay it off that same day or at least by the end of the week, I would pay it off in full. And this is how I've accumulated a gang of points. Don't be afraid of credit. I've gone to London, Los Angeles, Miami, a few. I haven't bought a plane ticket in two years because of the points that I've been able to acquire on my Chase Platinum. Um, Chase Sapphire Reserve. It's not Chase Platinum. I don't even think they do platinum cards anymore. But whatever. We're going to talk about some stuff. So hopefully you are prepared to stop being normal. Hopefully you're prepared to make some moves so you and your family can be economically secure in the future. Because if you live long enough, it's coming. So with that, I'll see you guys in the next video.